So today we are looking at day 14 of our retreat. And the key point for today says, if you are continually saying things that affirm your incompetence, echo hopelessness, nurture anxiety, or fuel pessimism, then that will also shape your reality. There are people who are living the wrong reality. There are people who are living life the wrong way, not according to what God destined for them, not according to the potential they're supposed to manifest, because out of their hearts, the mouth is speaking what is inside. They consistently affirm incompetence. They echo hopelessness, not your anxiety, and foil pessimism. All of this is some under affirming incompetence. And I want to dwell on this very well, because this is one thing that I know, and I've seen people exhibit this uh, um, character or this attitude in our communities across the world, affirming incompetence. So we need to avoid affirming incompetence in how we speak. Because when you speak, it, whether you're communicating with yourself or you're communicating with other people, and if the way you communicate demonstrates or show that you feel that you are incompetent or you're trying to show other people that you are incompetent, it minimizes your chances of success. Yes, we are all work in progress. So it is better that instead of communicating or affirm, uh, affirming incompetence, anytime you're talking about yourself, talk from the place of growth, talk from the place of somebody who desires to grow. What does that mean? It means that affirm what you are currently doing and the aspirations ahead of you anytime you talk, anytime you're talking to yourself or to other people. Let me give an example. Let me say that um, I want to pick an example from the session here. Okay, let me, let me pick Stephanie. Stephanie is a growing um, real estate expert and the investor, yeah, so you can go to her, she can give experience and all of that. But you know, now she is still to grow in the global scene, maybe start dealing with real estate in, 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 in global cities like, like, like Dubai, New York, Berlin, Washington, all of these global cities. She's still gonna get there. Now let's imagine that she now goes for an event, she now goes for an international event in Douala or in Lagos, Nigeria or wherever. And now she is networking. And she starts talking to people and she starts saying, hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm a real estate expert and consultant and an investor from Cameroon. And uh, 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 um, at the moment, I am just trying to see what I can do in Cameroon and build my career. Now, that is how affirming incompetence. But is she in Cameroon? Yes. Is the work she's going to do just in Cameroon? Yes. But when you speak like that, you affirm incompetence and you are minimizing the chance that you are a growing person and you have future dreams and aspirations. But let's reverse it now. She needs to affirm competence, even though she's growing. So she, she can, let's say, let's say now she's talking like somebody who affirms competence. She cannot speak and say, hi, my name is Stephanie from Cameroon. At the moment, I run uh, um, a real estate firm with a global vision. But for now, our main market is in Cameroon. And our goal is that in the next two years, we're going to start having properties in, in Dubai and in New York and in a couple of uh, um, cities. But at the moment, we are building relationships right now with relevant people like you, so that as we begin to expand according to our action plan, we'll start communicating with you and see how we can work together. Now, do you get a difference? Do you get a difference? The first one was affirming incompetence, and that's how majority of us talk. 
So we talk and minimize ourselves, minimize half the things that we have done. We just say, I'm not saying that she, she did not hide there. Did you notice? She did not, she, there was no lie. But there's a way that she communicated and somebody could listen to her and see growth and aspirations. And this, this can make somebody to be part of it. So be careful. You cannot enter next year and live your life by always affirming incompetence. That's why like many of you, like it's only mentees, I, when you write and use the word try, I'll warn you, don't use the word try. Don't use the word try. Okay, that is you affirming incompetence. And, and as you do that, it affects your reality. It affects how you act, which is not good for you. So begin to affirm competence. Affirm growth and determination, not laziness and incompetence. So anytime that you are talking with somebody, make sure that you are the strength of your conversation or how you talk. You are affirming growth and determination. Like, this, like the second conversation, I just gave an example of Stephanie networking in an event. Okay, so make sure that when you are talking, when you are having a conversation, you are affirming growth, determination, and what? Competence. Do not affirm laziness, incompetence, and mediocrity. It's going to affect your access to opportunities. And God changes people's lives by bringing them opportunities through people. And people have lost open doors and breakthroughs because of how they communicate. They communicate by affirming incompetence and hopelessness. Are we following? This is very important. Very, very important. So you need to make sure that after this, you practice this. Hear this. For as long as human beings are, 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 have been communicating, you know, what they need to consistently try to figure out how to communicate well and with competence within themselves and with other people. It is your responsibility to consistently figure out how to communicate very well within yourself and also communicating with other people. Because the ability to communicate competently, that means without affirming incompetence, the ability to communicate competently is critical to, the, to a person's personal and professional success in life, career, and business. Yes, the, the ability that you have to communicate competently is very critical to your personal and professional success in whatever that you do. That is why you have to avoid affirming incompetence, echoing, uh, uh, hope, echoing hopelessness, nurturing anxiety, and always sounding pessimistic. It's not good. It can make people not to work with you or desire to collaborate with you. Affirming incompetence also negatively impacts your internal belief system. Because as long as you begin to speak incompetence and hopelessness, before you know it, your soul will absorb it, your spirit will absorb it, and then you start having the wrong belief system. You start feeling that you are not good enough. And when that happens, insecurity now sets in. And insecurity is very dangerous in the journey of success. Insecurity and doubt, very, very dangerous. And this is one of the ways that people build in insecurities and doubt because they have negatively engineered their internal belief system in how they communicate within themselves and with other people. So affirming incompetence negatively impacts your internal belief system, which impacts how you behave and how you act. Because you can never behave above your belief system. You can never act above your belief system. Let me tell you something. How you are acting at the moment, how you think at the moment, how you behave at the moment, you are just responding to the quality of your belief system. 
You are just responding to the quality of what you believe. So you need to be careful. So you need. So the question we say is, do I always say things with my mouth that relates to the above affirmations? If yes, you need to stop immediately. Stop immediately. You should speak success words. There's something I call success words. Let me tell you, anytime you find yourself, now, note this very carefully. Anytime you find yourself in a networking event, make sure you prepare your way, your introduction or what they call your pitch. Make sure you prepare how you're going to introduce people. Make sure that there are success words inside. I'm talking about words that affirm competence. Anytime you want to network with somebody on WhatsApp, let's say you are texting somebody for the first time, make sure that your text is full of strong affirmations. But yet at the same time, humility and respect and honor for the person. So from today, you should speak success words. When you find yourself in circles of power and influence, I intentionally put power and influence. Because when you find yourself in the midst of great people, how you sound and the words that comes out from your mouth will determine how much value they will see in your life. Okay, okay. The 14 evening talks about, the key point says, the truth is that most people grossly underestimate the power they possess to effect positive change. Many people pos uh, uh, grossly underestimate themselves. And you know, this, this is one of the reasons why many people are underperforming. Many people are not performing at the highest level as far as their careers and uh, businesses are concerned, as far as their purpose and passions are concerned. Because they underestimate. And this also stems from day 14 morning. Be careful. Do not underestimate your personal power. Do not underestimate your personal power. Okay? Everyone has power inside of them. All of us, we have a dimension of power given to us by God the day we were created. There's something every human being has what they call the human power or the human spirit. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 26, and God blessed them. That word blessed is talking about transfer of authority. God blessed them to be fruitful. That word blessed when you look at from the Hebrew perspective, it's talking about transfer of authority, transfer of power. So every human being has a, a form of power. That's why there are certain results that you can achieve on your own without the power of God. But there are certain dimensions of results that you need a higher power to work with. You understand? Every one of us has a dimension of power inside of us. Every human has personal power. What is personal power? That is the important thing we're talking about. Personal power is the ability to influence people and events in your life. Personal power is the ability to influence people and the events in your life. So many people have this power, but yet they grossly underestimate this power. Maybe because of self-doubt, maybe because they grew up in families where they, they, they used to call them, they, you, you adult, very stupid child, you will never amount to nothing. You know, a family that they don't speak success words towards their kids. If you're a parent, you be careful. Raise your kids with success words. Raise your kids with words that affirm and, and, and prove that they command a level of power and they can achieve in life. It's very important. Many people are currently gross underestimating their power 
because of the kind of family they grew in. Number two, because of the kind of community and environment they grew in. Number three, because of the kind of school they went into. So all of these can, can contribute and make somebody to grossly underestimate their power. And the only way to, to change this is for the person's mindset to change. And that's why maybe like the biggest testimony about uh, 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 PPA that many of you tell me is that the biggest is that, that there are things that you now do that you do not know that you could do. Because as, you, as we consistently teach, you are in an environment where every day you read things that challenge you, pushes you, you go through morning sessions. So all of this now is, there's a re-engineering going on. There's a reformatting. Your system is being reformatted. Your soul is being reformatted. And there are installations of the elements and things. Even this morning, Richard, that we're doing, is all about reformatting and instilling into you the things that you need to start harnessing the great power that is in you that you can now use to effect positive change in your life, career, business, family, community, and wherever you find yourself. So personal power is the ability to influence people and events in our lives. So many of us always underestimate this, our personal power. This power becomes useless when it is grossly underestimated. Yes, we all have personal power, but as long as you grossly underestimate this power, that's, this power is useless. When there is no intentionality to effectively uh, uh, um, 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 enhance positive change in our lives, careers, and communities, this personal power is also useless. So intentionality is important. Like, for example, you are preparing for the next year. If you are not intentional to take certain actions to see your life change, you are minimizing your personal power. So intentionality is important to bring to light the personal power that is in you. Hear this carefully. Willingness without putting to effect your personal power will not help you. If you have the will, but you are not willing to apply the personal power that is in you, the personal power that God deposited into you, then the will is useless. Now, the following makes up the combination of your personal power. There are a couple of things that makes up the combination of your personal power. So there are elements. That, that, that when they come together, they form your personal power. Not just personal power that is dormant, but active personal power. Personal power that produces results. Personal power that you can use to effect change in your life. You get the concept? Because personal power that is not creating positive change in the things that concerns you is useless. So if you are just listening to me and you listen to me, you remain the same. You don't go and take action. Everything remains the same. You are not using your personal power to create positive change in your life and the event around you. So there are a couple of elements that from my personal analysis, these are elements that I've written based on reviewing my life and working with, with clients as a coach and in different dimensions and research about human psychology. So these are things I believe that when you are able to put all of these things together, if these things are together in your life, you will always have a very high chance of putting your personal power into effect to create positive change in your life. Remember, I'm emphasizing, your personal power is useless if it is not creating change in your life if it is not advancing your life, because the use of power is to power your life, is to enable your life, is to enhance your life to produce results. Are we there? Now, let us look at this element. Number one is purpose discovery. Purpose discovery. Yes, when you discover your purpose is part of your personal power. Number two, proactive and growth mindset. Yes, you have this mindset of you're always proactive. You don't react. Like, for example, 
proactive people by now must have written their, 20, their 2023 goals or next year's goals, even their life goals for the next 10, 15, 20, 40 years. That's being proactive. You are proactive trying to orchestrate the kind of life you want to see happen to you. Growth mindset means that you are, you are willing to grow. You are willing to increase your skills. You are willing to do things that will challenge you. So that's the second element. Proactive and growth mindset. Element number three, attention and intentionality. You pay attention to your life and you have, you have this intentional way of doing things. You don't, you don't just do things anyhow. Life example, you are following this retreat station right now. You are paying attention to whatever I'm doing and whatever I'm saying. And you are even taking down notes and making decisions for yourself. Number two, you are intentional. You, are, you, you did not just wake up at 4 a.m. to be part of this session because you feel that you are waking up so that, you know, I, 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 let's say, for example, I should not get angry and ask why we're not at the morning session. No, you are waking up because you know that this is important for your success. You are intentional about this coaching session and you find it relevant as far as your tomorrow is concerned. That's intentionality. Number four, courage and the ability to take the first step. Yes, without courage, it is impossible to make good use of your personal power. Courage and the willingness to take the first step. Yes, you have the courage to start things. You have the courage to embark on things. You have the courage to proceed. And when you have plans, you have goals, you always take the first step. For example, you have been thinking of starting a business. You move from just thinking and you do what? You start, you, you, you take the courage, you take the bold by the horn. You go to the market, do research, you begin to arrange your startup costs, you take the first step, go to the landlord and ask the rent or whatever that you need to do. The first things you need to do to start that business, you take the first step to do it. Okay? Number five, the next element that makes up your personal power is a lifestyle of faith. <clears throat> a lifestyle of faith. You do things with the faith that they are going to come to pass. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. Like you are taking actions and you know that tomorrow you are going to be very successful. And you take actions in faith, knowing that these actions you are taking will produce a beautiful life tomorrow. Have you really seen that life? No. Do you have proof that you'll be successful tomorrow? No. But every day of your life, you keep on living a lifestyle of faith because you have this absolute belief and hope that there is a beautiful life tomorrow. You don't know how it is going to happen, but you keep living a lifestyle of faith. You take actions. You start new projects, you go to school, you do whatever you can do with absolute belief, with no doubt that you have a glorious tomorrow. You believe in what the Bible says, that as a child of God, part of your inheritance is that good things will follow you wherever you go. Part of your inheritance is that God will make the nations as their possessions. You now believe that and you begin to live a lifestyle of faith towards that which you believe. I'm using lifestyle because faith without actions is not faith. What validates that you have faith is that you are taking actions towards the future that you are convicted about and you are hoping for. The next element that uh, uh, makes up your personal power is you have the heart to contribute and bring change where you are. Yes, you have the heart to contribute and bring change where you are. Oh, this is very important. You have the heart to contribute and bring change where you are. It could be in your family. It could be in, it's not about what you have. It's about you, you have the heart to do that. You understand? Let's say, uh, uh, um, um, you have the you have the heart to just you can just take maybe uh, a small ten thousand one hundred dollars that you have and you go to an orphanage and you buy a few supplies and go support the orphanage. 
It's not about it's not about you waiting that you will reach someday. No, you just have the heart to contribute and bring change where you are. Maybe in your church, you see that there's something you can do in the church and bring change. You do it. You see that wherever wherever you are in your family, it could be your parents, your siblings, even your friends. Wherever you find yourself, you have this natural heart in you. Even if it's not natural, you have grown as a human being. You have grown as a person, and you are in intentional in contributing and bringing change. Where you find yourself, you are willing to contribute. You are willing to bring change. You can just decide and buy a gift for somebody. That, that's the change. That's contributing. You can see a leader doing something. You can see, like some of you will just sit, you know, you're just like, oh, you know what? I, I, I just feel that I should send you 5,000, 2,000, 10,000 for, for, for airtime, right? You, you, you know that you know that, for example, I will not, I will not lack air time or not lack internet to, 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 to go online. But it's just that you have this heart to bring change. You have this heart to contribute. And that is the essence. That is the power. And of course, there is a blessing attached to that. That is one way to unleash your personal power. Develop the heart to contribute. Develop the heart to bring change where you are. And that is one, there's no better way to attract opportunities to bring attention to you and make people trust you and build credibility than having the heart to contribute and bring in change, okay? The next element that you need to unleash your personal power is knowledge and skills. The more knowledge that you acquire, the more skills that you develop, that is how you increase your ability to unleash your personal power that can create positive change in your life, career, and business. Okay? So, for example, you waking up at 4 a.m. for those who are in Cameroon, or that's why in Dubai, working at different times, South Africa, Nigeria, U.S., working at different times. But as long as you are disciplining yourself to be part of this station, you are developing the element that makes up your personal power because nobody produces results above the quality of the knowledge they have and the skillfulness that they possess. So you want to develop your personal power, keep on seeking relevant knowledge in your industry, keep on building relevant skills, hone your skills and work to perfect your craft. Hone your skills and work to perfect your craft. It is very important. So these are some of the primary elements that when you combine them and build them together, it unleashes. You begin to see your personal power getting to work and producing tremendous results for you. Effective, positive change begins to happen in your life, career, business, marriage, whatever that concerns you. So do not underestimate your power to effect change. You have the power to effect change. Now begin to take steps. Remember, intentionality is one of the elements. Your willingness to contribute and bring change, you must have these things. Then your personal power will come to effect. When you do this, that's one of the things that contributes for your life to move from glory to glory, one good news to another, or career growth, business growth, in whatever that you do. All right, everybody, that is it for today. I hope that um, you were blessed, you were challenged, and you will go and activate next year. One of the most important things that must be in play on a daily basis is your personal power. And when you and when your personal power partner with the power of God, you become unstoppable you become very unstoppable. Okay? All right. Good. I hope that you were blessed, you were challenged, and you are going to face uh, your next year with your personal power beaming, willing to create positive change as far as your life and career, business, and whatever that concerns you is concerned. All right, guys. Thank you so much for following the session. God bless you. Take care and see you tomorrow, same time as we continue with the retreat. Keep winning. Cheers.